right, Algebra 1, Lesson 65. This one is on addition of radical expressions and then weighted averages, so two different lessons. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is addition of radical expressions. So, for example, let's say you see 4 square root of 2 minus 5 square root of 2 plus 12 square root of 2. Now, because we have something square root of 2, something square root of 2, something square root of 2, these are seen as like terms. So you can actually add your numbers. 4 minus 5 plus 12, which would give us what? 4 minus 5 is negative 1 plus 12 would be huh? 11. So that would be 11 square root of 2. See that? You see how we did that? Okay, so that's how you're going to be doing these kind of problems. Now, they're going to try to trick you because look at this next one. 4 square root of 3 plus 3 square root of 5 minus 6 square root of 3. Now, I want you to look at this, okay, because there's actually two different radical expressions. I have something square root of 3, something square root of 3, and then th something square root of 5. So these are like terms, and this is a like term, which only has one. So basically, we're going to like term and add those or subtract these. So this is 4 square root of 3 minus 6 square root of 3. So that would be negative 2 square root of 3, right? And then we just have the plus 3 square root of 5. And you can't do anything with that. And now we can't add these two because this is square root of 3 and this is square root of 5. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be the final answer on that one. Okay? Let's try this next one. Um, negative 3 square root of 2 plus 5 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 2 plus 8 square root of 3. Hopefully you can realize real quick that we have two different um, expression, radical expressions that are like terms. This one has something square root of 2, something square root of 2, something square root of 3, something square root of 3. So I underlined the square root of 3 is twice and the square root of 2 is once. Okay? I'm going to change this minus to a plus negative. I work better with those. Um, okay, so now we're going to go in and add our like terms. So negative 3 plus negative 2 would be negative 5 square root of 2. All right? Then we have these two, 5 square root of 3 plus 8 square root of 3 would be 13 square root of 3. Right? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yes, okay. So that would be the final answer. Okay? So hopefully um, you are able to see. Now, even sometimes you're going to get a problem like this, but don't let it freak you out. 4 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 2 plus 6 square root of 5. Square root of 3, square root of 2, square root of 5. There's nothing you can do. So this would actually, you would say, there's no further, there's nothing else we can do further. And they actually said no further simplification, simplification is possible. So, you would just leave it, okay? All right, now, the second part of the lesson is on weighted average. Now, what this means is, is for example, um, as a math teacher, um, there are several different things that I measure when I'm doing grading math. I do tests, homework, and then participation. This means you turn in all your homework, you do all your lesson practices, etc. Okay, so um, as a teacher, I do test, homework, and then participation. And participation is things like uh, you turned in everything on time, you're participating in class, you're doing all your lesson practices, you're working hard to show me that you're doing your work. Okay, and a lot of times I give participation 20% or even 25 sometimes. Homework, I usually give um, 35 or 40%. So uh, let's do, I'm going to do 35 to show y'all something. And then test, I usually do, let's see, 35, 45, 55, 45%. Okay, so basically, 45%, 35, and then 20. I'm actually gonna make these simpler, so I'm gonna make this 30, 
and then 50 right here. Just, I'm going to show you in a minute. You'll understand. Okay? So, 50 plus 30% makes 80%. 80% plus 20% makes 100%, which is what I want my weighted averages to equal. So, it's always important when your teachers um, start working on their um, scores, 50% of your test scores will make up most of your grade. 30% will be your homework grade and 20% will be your participation. Okay, so that's kind of how it works and I'll explain a little bit more in detail in just a minute. But let's talk about it all together right here. Okay, so here's what they tell me. Susan's score improved on each test. Her scores were 60, 71, and 91. The average of her, score, of her scores is as follows, and it goes on to, to say that they added up all of those three and you end up getting 222 as your sum, your answer. So then, because we have three scores, we would divide that sum by three and end up getting 74 as her average score on her test. Okay, now, here's what she said. But the teacher did not think that this was a fair grade because... Um, the second test, or I'm sorry, the third test was the most important. It covered the most of the material that the teacher felt like showed she knew everything. The second test covered um, twice as much like uh, than the first test. So this one was not a real indication of how well she did. This one was a pretty good indication. This one was a really good indication, okay? So what the teacher wanted to do is to take these and do this. So here's what she says. Um, the teacher thought that the second test was twice as important as the first test and that the third test was four times as important as the first test. In other words, she counted the score on the first test once. So this is the first test, second test, third test. So she counted the first score or the first test score once. She counted the second test score since it was twice as important, twice, 71 plus 71, that's the second one. And then since she thought the third test was four times as more important as the fourth test, she did it four times. Okay, 91 plus 91 plus 91 plus 91. Okay, and so her total sum at this point is now 566. Okay? And so now how many test scores did she end up having? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then she would take this and divide it by seven. And then this would give us an average of 80.86, which you would round it and it would be 81%. Okay? So 81%, they're saying, is a better score than 74. And the teacher thought this was more fair since this was um, what was most covered. So this is what the teacher went with. But some teachers would have went with this. That's the confusing part, okay? But you basically, it all depends on the teachers you get, okay? Um, here's another way. Um, let's do a few more weighted averages, okay? For example, it says Jim's score were 60, 70, 80, and 90. Well, that was pretty simple, okay? What is the weighted average of his scores if the tests were weighted... One, two, four, and six in that order. Do you know what it's asking? So the teacher thought this score was six times as important, this one was four times as important, two times as important, and this was just the normal importance. So um, they want us to do it in that order. They were weighted one, two, four, six in this order. So what they're wanting us to do is to do the 60 one time, okay, plus the 70 two times. So I'm just going to put 70 times 2. I could put 70 plus 70, but I'm just going to do 70 times 2. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to do plus 80, and I could write 80 plus 80 plus 80 plus 80 four times, but I'm just going to put 80 times 4, which is the same thing. And then the last one, 6... Um, felt like this last score was six times as important. So I'm going to take 90 and times it by six, or I could do 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, plus 90 um, to get our final answer. So when we add all this up, 
60 and then the 70 times 2, which would end up being 490, no, 140, sorry, um, 320, 540. Um, and when we added all these up, um, I'm just going to go and look, it's going to end up being 10,060 as our total sum, adding all these up. And then she divided it by 13. Why 13? Because this is one score plus two scores makes three, plus four scores makes seven, plus six scores makes 13. So she divides it by 13 and she ends up getting the answer 81.54, which this five is five or above, so they would round that 81 to an 82 percent. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, this last one that we're going to look at, I really want you to pay attention because um, I need to make sense of it, okay? Here's what it says. In a graduate level course, so this is college, um, past college, um, uh, Smith, Smith R. was taking a graduate level course, okay? Each of the three tests were weighed 20%. So this teacher thought that tests should be weighed 20% each each test. That's important. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and the final paper was weighed 40%. Final paper was weighed at 40%. Now, she said that they had three tests and one final paper. So basically, the three tests, since it's 20% each, would be 20 for one test, 20 for the second test, and 20% for the third test. And then the final paper would be 40%. What does that give us? 40, 60, 80, 100%. Which is exactly what you're wanting when you're doing papers and grading. Because 100% means perfect. Okay? So, this is how the tests are done. They were 20% each. And then 40% for the final paper. Now, keep that in mind. And here's what it says. Smith's scores on the three tests were... 60% on one of the tests, 70% on the second test, and 80% on the third test. Okay, these are all 20% as well. This is percent of the grade, 20% of 100 is for this grade. What that means. Okay? And then his score on his final paper, which was 40%, uh, was 60 Okay, sorry about that. My dog was going crazy. Okay, so let's look at this. So we have um, these percentages, 60%, 70%, 80%, and 60%, all depended on a paper, uh, one of the test scores, one of the test scores, one of the test scores. Now, because this is 20% of this, 20% of this, 20% of this, 40% of this, I want you to write it like this. Now, remember when you're working with math, you can never leave a percent as a percent. It has to be put either as a decimal or over a fraction. So 20% is 20 over 100 if you left it as a fraction. But if you were to write it as a decimal, it would be 0.20. Okay, just letting you know. So if I am wanting 20% of 60, remember in math, of means uh, time. So we're going to do 20% 0.20 times 0.60. Okay, then we're going to take plus 20%, 0.20, times 0.70. Then we're going to take the next one, 20%, 0.20, times 0.80. And then we're going to take plus 0.40, times 0.60. This is kind of like what we did. We needed two scores of one, we needed four scores of the other. We're taking um, something similar to that, we're only doing 20% of instead of four times of some number. So we needed four of the, uh, the test earlier when we were talking about 91 represented um, the best score. So the teacher wanted to use it four times. Well, this one, 60%, she's wanting to use 20% of the time. So that's how we would write it, 20% of 60%. Okay, now once we do all the math of that, uh, we end up getting, okay, all of that, um, that's going to give us the sum. 
And then we're going to divide by 100%, which 100%, let me show you this, 100% is, um, just like if you were to say 50% is 0 0.50, the decimal mode was moved twice. So watch here, 1, 2. So 100% is really just 1, 1 whole or 1.00, however you want to say it. So we're going to take all of this and divide it by 1.00. And when we take all of this and divide it by 1.00, we end up getting 66.66, which is um, really 66%. Because this is the decimal form of 66. This is the percent form of 66. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, I actually have another way that I actually would do it in my head. Um, sort of in my head. Okay? And the way that is, is because this equals 100%, I'm going to um, show you something. Because uh, 20%, 20 out of 100, you could take the zeros and drop them. So that would mean two scores out of 10 would be at 60%. 60 is the score, and we would do it 2 out of 10 times. So, for example, this one right here would be 20% of that, which is 20%. We'd cross out the zeros and do 2 out of 10 times. So I wrote it 2 out of the total 10 times, which you'll see in just a minute. So let's look at this one. Same thing, 20% out of 100, I'd cross out the zeros. So this score, 70, is going to give me 2 out of 10 times. So I'm going to write 70 twice. Okay, same thing, 20 over 100. Um, and that crosses out the zeros. So then 2 out of 10 times is going to give me the score of 80. So I'm going to write it two times. Now this 60, which is 40%, is different. Because 40 over 100, when we cross that out, is 4 out of 10. So this score, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, I would write 4 times. 4 out of the 10. Because... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 scores, and I wrote this score twice, this score twice, this score twice, and this score four times, okay? Because of how I did it over here. All right, and then I would just add up my sum, all right, which would end up being 660, all right? And then if I divided that by 10, all right, actually maybe 6,000. I'm not sure. Uh, so uh, I didn't actually do the math. Um, so then when we figured it out, we would get 66 as the answer. So either way, regardless of how you do it, this is what you would end up getting, okay? So 660 would be our sum. We divided it by 10 because there are 10 numbers, and we would get 66 as our answer, okay? I don't care which method you use. I actually prefer this method that I just showed you. Um, but whichever. Okay, now, before you shut it off, uh, my son told me he just did uh, one of the lesson practices, and it was C. And let's, I want to do this one with you because it actually was not taught in the lesson. So, here's what it says. Square root of 2 plus 3 square root of 2 minus 4 square root of 2 plus 6 square root of 3. Now, as I taught you before, um, we're going to underline all the like terms. So this something square root of 2, something square root of 2, and something square root of 2, and then this 6 square root of 3 is something totally different. Now, up to this point, I've taught you how to add these. Now, this, this one doesn't have a number in front of it, okay? So how many square root of 2s do we have? One. Okay? So even though it doesn't have a number 1 here, you're going to have to put a number 1 here. Because we at least have 1 square root of 2. So that shows 1 square root of 2's. This one shows 3 square root of 2's, 4 square root of 2's. Okay, now we can do the math. That would equal 4 square root of 2 minus 4 square root of 2 plus 6 square root of 3. I just brought everything else down after I answered this. Okay, so then 4 square root of 2 take away 4 square root of 2 would give us nothing. Okay, and then plus 6 square root of 3. So nothing plus 6 squared root of 3, the answer would just be 6 squared root of 3. Okay, that was answer C, just so you know from now on, um, when you're working those kind of problems, that's how you would do it. Okay, that is lesson 65.